This episode of Stepping Up is somebody who's stepped up many times. In fact, 40 times he stepped up in a ring in the professional boxing arena. Derek Chisora, welcome to Stepping Up. Thank you, sir. Great Thank to you see very you. Much. Thank you. 40 fights. Number 40 is coming in a couple Number 40 is coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's the 26th of October, isn't yes. it? Yes. We're going to come back to that. But yeah. I want to talk a bit about you, because I'm really fascinated by your life. I'm going to put it to you. Yeah. You can disagree or agree that you've gone from being almost a bad boy in a mm. bit of trouble here and there. Yes. Uh, slightly controversial in terms of uh, boxing events and yes. uh, meetings with David Hay and others. And now you've kind of transformed and you're interested in farming and antiques and lots and lots of different things. And I just want to, so you came, you're born in Zimbabwe. Yeah, I was born in Zimbabwe, yeah. And you came to this country back when in? When I was 16. You back? In the beginning of 2000, 2000, yeah, in January. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of got into a little bit of trouble with that? Yeah, before? you know, it was going a bit of trouble. Um, you know, it's difficult in translating, like living in Africa and then suddenly you move to Europe and then trying to deal with the whole situation. So I got a bit into a trouble, but I think I could not handle. And are you an example of boxing actually being an opportunity for helping people, saving people, letting them get out of the maybe a rut they get into. I mean, it's often been said that boxing is an opportunity for people. Boxing is an opportunity, but it depends if you got it. You know, it depends if you want to go in a room with another man who's going to hit you in the face and stuff like that. And you obviously did. I did, yeah. So I uh, just carried on with it. And, and was, was there sort of some inspirational figure that made you think boxing might be the way forward? How did it, I mean, how did it happen? Because I was not good at anything else apart from fighting, so I figured I'd never stick to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made a great success of it. Yeah. You made a great success yeah. of it. So you get into boxing, yeah. um, and I think it would be fair to say uh, that there have been a few incidents outside the ring. Yes. Uh, with opponents. Yes, opponents, civilians, you know, the whole lot. I've done it all. Is that because there's a sort of natural aggression within you, or is it is it the psychology that you're taking somebody on? Uh, it's more like, um, to be honest, I don't want to take no crap from anybody. <laughs> That's all. I'm, 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 I'm a man, you know. It's like if you're a man, you don't want to take crap from any man. You know, I live I live by the rules of I live in the jungle. I'm a lion. You know, I look after my family. You know, I'm, a, I'm the alpha lion. So if another alpha lion comes to me and tells me crap, I'm like, I defend myself. So that's how I always look at the views of, my, of how I live every day. Now, one of those very public contretemps yes. was, of course, with somebody who, remarkably, is now your manager. Yes. Can you explain that story to us? Uh, listen, you know, I keep saying this. I lost a fight, you know, big time in Germany, and then I was like... This, this is David Hay. Yeah, yeah, so I lost a fight with, with Vladimir, you know, Vitali, I think, yeah, Vitali, yeah. And then uh, I was like, oh, where's the next payday coming from? And then suddenly, you know, David was in the crowd, you know, saying what he needs to say because he wants to get a fight too. And then saying, oh, that's my next fight. So, we, so I approached him and then he didn't know what was happening, but I already knew. And then uh, well, things went overboard. Come on, what yeah. happened? What happened? Things, things were so, tri tripods were swinging around, punches were chucked around, bottles were flown in there. So, uh, and uh, that, that gave me nightmares afterwards, I tell you that, because most people don't know what happened afterwards, you know, when David left. Because David jumped on a plane and he left straight away. I went to sleep, like, uh, I, went to, I went back to my hotel. Next morning at the, at the airport, I got arrested. Yeah, so it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a bit of a mad one. And he's now your manager? How yes. Does, how does that work? Uh, you know, because um, the fight happened, he won, he beat me fair and square, nothing else to say after that. You know, uh, always, always been David's fan, you know, he's always, always been, he's always proven, he's always done everything right for himself. And um, at one point I was like, you know, I was looking for a good, good manager and stuff like that. And then I uh, saw him and I spoke to him and I called him and I was like, I would like you to manage me. And I saw, so I could see that happening. Was he a bit shocked by that? He was a bit shocked at the same time he was happy. Yeah. 
That's that. But it is, it is an extraordinary story. But what's it like? I mean, all of us in our lives face challenges. Yes. You know, different challenges, family challenges, health issues, yeah. whatever job issues. Mm. But when we have our disappointments in life, generally, yeah, they're private. But with you, you're in a boxing ring, and you're a professional boxer. You're good at what you do. You win a lot, lot, lot more fights than you've lost. What is it like? You've built yourself up. For, yeah. a big, for a big bout, when you lose, do you, I mean, do you sink into sort of gloom? How do you how do you respond to that? Well, you know, the bad days. Do you know? Do you know? When I lose, I always say, I always pray now. I always pray and say, you know what, God, I know you. That's I know that was your. You got a reason for me to lose this fight. I know you got better things for me to come ahead. So uh, thank you very much. You know, I, Amen. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm after I leave the ring, I say, what's next? You know, because I don't want to sit there and moan and cry about, oh, why did I lose this fight? Why did I do that for? If I've done this, I'd have done this. No, you know, it's all about, it's all my, my, my career is in God's hands. So faith is a big part of Derek Chisora? Yeah, big time, yeah. Is that from growing up in Zimbabwe or? Oh, no, you know, I've been born, born again for the last, two, I was born again two years ago, you know, so I stopped drinking. I'm sober for one year and nine months now. And, uh, you know, as I say, you know, gave, gave my career to God and say, you he helped me get to the top. Some people say you're in better physical condition than you've been for a very long time. Yeah, yes, because part, part of the whole situation of me with joining with David was, you know, uh, every time I used to pray, David's, had, David's name used to come up in my, in my prayers. So, David, I don't know what's going on there. So, I just, that's when I approached him to be my manager and he, he helped me out a lot. When I realized, he wanted it more. He came to my house after I announced the fight with uh, with Dylan, and he goes, "You've been training for two weeks, and your weight hasn't moved yet." Because I know you want to stay at home and stuff. I goes, "No, pack your bags, leave your car. You don't need your car. I mean, you're just addressed at this time." And he checked me in the hotel, and I stayed in the hotel since for the fight. I started training yeah. hard every morning. You tell me. You're waking up at five o'clock. You have to be on a bike for about 45 minutes by yourself in the gym, and uh, I'll be in the gym, and then sometimes I will not go. And then you'll be looking at the camera, and goes, oh. and they will send me a message. Are you on your way to the gym? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm on my so way. So he's a real manager, though. Yeah. So he's also, so I'm testing the guy, you know. So I like to I like to test a little bit. And I wonder, <laughs> some people would say Christianity and boxing yeah. are, a, are a strange combination. They they are. They they. Some people say I uh, say that, but you know what? To be honest with you. Boxing is not a brutal sport. Boxing is a, an, an art form. I have to put it to you, Derek, that it does look pretty brutal sometimes. That's an art form. For it to get to brutal, it's an art form. You have to be like, you start from round one, you know, you, 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 you're sizing the other guy, you're drowning him, you know, you're boxing him, and then later on to the round, you take it down, you, you start taking power, power shots. You know, it's, it's all up and down, you know, it's nice. But you've knocked a few people out in your time. I've knocked some pe few people out, and I've been knocked out myself, you know, which is not a bad thing. But you know, it, 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 it's uh, it's enjoy it's enjoyable, basically. And what also fascinates me is you've gone from, as you say, being in trouble yes. when you were young, uh, getting into some pretty extraordinary scenes as a professional boxer, yeah. and suddenly we've got Derek Chisora that likes antiques. Yeah, man, you know. <laughs> uh, it's, Antiques are beautiful, you know, certain things we take for granted for now, one day we won't see them. Because the way things are moving on fast right now is unbelievable. So what do you collect? Sometimes I collect old phones, like uh, old vases, like uh, wine holders. And uh, I go into storage, I think I got about at least about two phone boxes and one old black taxi and stuff like that. <laughs> phone boxes? Yeah. They're very, very, very British symbol, aren't they? Yeah, because I believe in the next 10, 15 years, we won't see any red phone boxes about. I think you're probably right, actually. Yeah, you're yeah. probably right. And the other big interest is, is animals, farming, that kind of thing. Where does that fit in? Because my granddad in Zimbabwe has got about 36 farms, so I, every time I finish school, I used to go hang out on the farm. So uh, farming is always, uh, you know, when you live in the countryside, and there's nothing out there stressing you out, it's you and the animals and your tractor and stuff like that. That's the life to be. Is that where you're going to be in 10 years' time? That's, that's the whole idea. Is it? Yeah, 100%. That's what I want to do, is 
leave the boxing, leave, the, leave everything, leave London alone, just live in the countryside, just ride my bike and look after the animals. So the transformation at that point will have been total, won't it? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Because I love farming. I love to be around animals and stuff like that. So I can't, I cannot say no. That's really, really interesting, and 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 again, surprising and different. Now we met, we met originally through a mutual friend. Yeah. Who said to me, "This Chisora bloke, he's uh, he's pretty Eurosceptic, you know." So we met, <laughs> and we talked, and you are a pretty committed believer in us leaving the European Union. Yes. What do you? What do you? What's the main thrust of that for you? I I, th I think I think I think is you know the people voted. You know, when uh, when people vote, it should be done. You it know, should. it should be done. You know, the public have voted. You know, the only people are giving it, they're making it so difficult is the Londoners. But when I travel the outskirts like, you know, Manchester, Birmingham, places like that, the same thing needs to be changed. And I, and I, I just think I vote to leave. Yeah. You know. And I think well, the whole country voted to leave, and we're still holding on on certain things, which is um, yeah, three and a half, nearly three and a half years ago. Yeah, by. which which is not fair, you know, because now people will not believe on vo on voting because if you vote, why are we voting for? Do you feel? I mean, do you feel obviously you're Zimbabwean by birth? Yes. You've lived here for twenty years. I mean, do you? How do you describe yourself? You, are you Zimbabwean? Are you British now? How do you? I'm both. You are both? Yes, I'm both. You know, I, I grew up in Zimbabwe. I, you know, Zimbabwe gave me my childhood, my, some of my childhood, and then I came here. I got my family here now, so I, I believe I'm both. You both, yeah. And what's the future for Zimbabwe? I mean, a lot of us, a lot of us, perhaps without much knowledge of the country, thought, you know, thought once Mugabe had gone, things would improve, but it doesn't seem to be at the moment. I know the, it's not only the Zimbabwe. I believe it's the whole Southern Africa, the whole Africa. You know. Corruption is a, is a poison in, in in Africa, man. Because everybody wants to make money off Africa, but not want to give it back to Africans. So it's corruption in both African countries. Where's the solution? <laughs> Difficult, isn't it? Where's the solution, man? The corruption in Africa is just like it's like cancer. To be honest with you, there's no cure for it because they just keep taking and keep taking and keep killing. So it's just difficult. Yeah, we we got different problems here. Yeah, we got different problems here. We haven't got those problems. No, yeah, hundred percent. But what we've got here is a, I, I mean, my view is we've got a Westminster elite, who just view those of us that voted Leave with contempt. Uh, they're doing their utmost to stop the referendum being put into effect. And uh, I don't know. I I sense people are getting pretty unhappy in this country. Yeah, people want to like leave and start making plans of their future basically you know people don't want to be like balancing it 50 50 they want to say okay if we're going to leave let's leave let me start moving situations around how i'm going to look after my family how i'm going to sort my retirement and find out if we're going to stay let's stay but i think we should leave because everybody's voted to leave so mm. now there are stories i don't know whether they're true yeah. that you've been driving around london with your car window down. Yeah, yeah, I do that. And seeing people protesting yeah. that they want a people's vote, as they call yeah, it, a second yeah, referendum. Yeah. So, is it true that you've been having a talk to? Uh, yeah, somebody? yeah. I don't have a talk. Actually, I actually shut out the window <laughs> <laughs> when I'm driving past. Because every time I, uh, when I used to have a guy, my my good friend Jay, he drives sometimes picks me up from the gym. I'm like, oh, take 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 it, take it right here. He goes, and he looks at me and goes, no, 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 please don't, please don't. And when I get up, I'm like, yeah, Brexit, Brexit, <laughs> you know. And they're there with their EU flags. Yeah, EU flags and stuff like that. So <laughs> you enjoy teasing these people? Yeah, I want to leave, yeah. Because they're quite aggressive, mind you. When they see the size of you, I guess they they're kind of back aggressive. off. They're not aggressive, you know, yeah. you know, there's two different aggressiveness. It's like shouting, you know, argument, you know, debating and stuff. That's a good and aggressive. But aggressive, some, some, some people are aggressive when they Start shouting and pushing their head, putting their hands yeah. on you. That's not nice. But if you're debating, having a it's good okay. debate, a great aggressive debate, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> so you deliberately get the car yeah. to drive through. Yeah, when well, they want to start, and I drive off. <laughs> <laughs> the history. Well, you're clearly very, very committed to this. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. And I have to say, you know, as as I've dedicated a lot of my life to Brexit, we're yeah. very, very pleased to have uh, you on board with our campaign. Now, big event coming up for you on the 26th of October. Yeah, 26th of October. At o the O2. O2 Arena. 
got to tell you, I'm going to be there. Oh, the you gonna, are you yeah, gonna I'm going to be there. there. Yeah, I'm going to be there. I'll get, I got a good seat for you, actually. Good. No, I'm looking you, forward to you it. You can see where I sit. <laughs> That's in the <laughs> ring. <laughs> yeah. So, so tell us, tell us about your preparations for this fight. You know, preparation been brutal. Preparation for me for the last uh, last year since I joined with David. David been very hard. You know, um, that I never tap. I rest, but I'm always in pain. You know, um, from Monday to Saturday, it's just hard training. You know, when Sunday comes, I'm I'm already shaking because I know Monday to you're Saturday back, you're it's going to be it. the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's been brutal. So preparation been great. You know, uh, got a cold new got got a new coach, I believe. I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> and then. Uh, my team is good, you know, they're pushing me to the maximum. I got a couple of my best good friends from America helping me, you know, training, Brian Jennings and Gerald Washington. And uh, it's been great, it's gonna be it's So you got good. the you, you got the physical yeah. preparation yeah. for a fight. What's yeah. the mental preparation for a big fight? For me I think for me it starts off when I leave my house. The moment I leave my house, go into the arena. That's when I switch on. Just get into the yeah. I switch on when I get in my car. I switch off when I get out of the car, and I'm just talking to the people. And when I'm getting in my dressing room, and I get in my dressing room and I chill out for a bit. And then uh, an hour before, everybody kind of leaves me alone, and then I switch on. It's like that for me. So your opponent this time, six foot eight. Six foot eight, yeah. Price. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's got re reputed to have one of the strongest punches in the world. Is that he right? has got a. <laughs> his punch will put you to sleep, wake up tomorrow morning. But <laughs> right. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try I won't be trying. I'm going to try and stay away from that right hand of his and his uppercut. So it's going to be a great, great fight. You look, do you look forward to it? Yeah, 100%. No apprehension? Never. You are a lion, aren't you? Pardon? You are a lion. Yeah, yeah I look earlier. forward to fighting. I love fighting. I can't get, you know, I cannot get enough of this fight, fighting game. So there's years more to come of you in the ring. There's more fights to come. There's more fights to come. Yeah. So if we want to watch this fight, how do we do it? You know, uh, Sky Box, uh, Sky Box Office. You know, uh, well, four zero. It's four zero one. Uh, press the red button and you see the, everything. But we're already start advertising it now, so it'll be be lively. Excellent. Well, I'm going to be there. I'm looking forward to it very much. Thank you, sir. Really enjoyed our conversation. Yeah. I think your transformation of your life is fascinating. I still find it quite difficult for somebody that loves going in the ring to think if you want to farm in Wiltshire in 10 years' time, but... Why not? <laughs> you know, you have to adapt. You know, some people love wine, some people love tequila. So I'm, I'm in the middle. <laughs> Derek, thank you very thank much you indeed. Very much, thank you. Sky Sports, you can watch 26th of October. Thank you.